Hi everyone, it's Laura from Sweet Handmade Cookies. Welcome back to the Sweet Handmade Cookies Kitchen, where today I'm making cookies to celebrate retirement. First things first is the dough, and so I'm gathering the ingredients. I need all-purpose flour, granulated sugar, unsalted butter, kosher salt, eggs, and vanilla beans. And through the magic of filmmaking, here I have 10 sheets of rolled out dough. I store the rolled dough in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. I take it out of the freezer and allow it to warm up a little bit before about 20 minutes until I'm ready to use it. And then I start the cutting process. And so uh, you'll see that what I do with the leftover scraps is I put them back in the freezer bag to re-roll. That is a possibility because I don't use flour, so it doesn't change the structure of the dough in any way. And then I can just continue to cut out the shapes. And now I'm using a brand new cookie cutter. I just purchased it. I really love the shape, but it turns out it's a little too big and I don't end up using it in the final set. You'll see what I do to remedy that in a moment. And that's 18 shapes. I just need to cut six more of this final design. Now I'm going to try to squeeze as many cookies out of the rolled dough. You don't want to waste the dough. There is effort, of course, even though I can roll, roll dough easily using my Eugene dough sheeter. I don't want to have to roll more than necessary. And now I'm getting out the cookie sheet. And so as I start placing these square cookies onto the cookie sheet, I realize that they really are very large and as I'm putting the rest of the cookies on I'm thinking to myself is are these too large and I do decide they are too large and so I take this greenish cookie cutter that I've used often and is really more my typical size you will see how much larger that square was and it really was too large and so trimming it by using this other cookie shape was a perfect decision. I then am able to squeeze all six of those cookies plus two more, so eight cookies on the cookie sheet, and then I, I know that I am in the right ballpark for cookie size. Now I'm heating up the oven, and while I am baking the cookies, I'm going to get started on coloring the icing. But first, I'm going to show you how I made the royal icing, which I did the day before. And so I always start the same way with royal icing, and that is mixing meringue powder with water. And I do that in my stand mixer in a bowl that I have dedicated to royal icing. I never mix anything else in that bowl. That eliminates uh, the risk of having grease in the bowl, which would uh, be detrimental to the consistency of the royal icing. The reason I use meringue powder and not egg whites, which is probably how your grandmother made royal icing, is because raw egg whites can be dangerous for older people, young children, and anyone with an immune, uh, a compromised immune system. And so pasteurized egg whites in meringue powder are a much safer way to make royal icing. And now I have combined the meringue powder and sugar and mixed it to the soft peak stage. And now I'm going to be adding the confectioners or powdered sugar. And so the way I do that is that first bag that I cut clear across the top gets dumped in all at once with the remaining sugar. And then the second bag is going to be added just a little bit at a time. I allow that sugar that I add to get mixed into the icing. Then I turn the mixer up a little bit higher. If I add it all at once, I'd get a massive sugar cloud that I would spend a lot of time cleaning up afterwards. So that's not how I like to operate. And so I just add a little bit at a time. And then I go in and I scrape the sides of the bowl to get off any other sugar that hasn't been incorporated. Give it one final mix and you'll see it becomes a very stiff icing that is perfect for if I need to make flowers or need to thicken some icing that I've accidentally made too thin. And now the cookies are baking and I am taking that icing that I made yesterday and I am going to get it ready to flood the cookies. And so I measured out about 600 grams of icing. I have added a bit of food coloring and now I am mixing that and adding water as needed until it is the right consistency, what I call flood consistency. And then I will bag up this icing and get started on the flooding of the cookies. And so as I mentioned earlier, this is a set for retirement. And 
Uh, it's for someone who is retiring from my local library. And so one of the things that I wanted to do was use a color that I thought, a color scheme that I thought would be appropriate. And so the first thing I chose was this light off-white color. To me, this made me think of uh, pages of a book. And so I flooded every one of the shapes in this color to bring a cohesiveness to the set. And you will see the way I flood a cookie is I outline the cookie, then I roughly fill it in, and then using the tip of the bag, I move the icing around to fill in any of the holes. Uh, I'll do a little tap of the cookie against the edge of the cookie sheet, and if there's any bubbles in the icing, I'll see them then, and then I can take care of those bubbles and, and clean that up so that the cookies are perfect. And uh, when I spoke to the lady who ordered the cookies, what she wanted on the cookies was a 36 to represent the number of years she'd worked at the library and the words happy retirement. That's all she requested, but she left it up to me to create something more. And this uh, fabulous lady who was retiring is also a Bobby Orr super fan. Has, she has met Bobby many times and in fact, a few years back, I created a set of Bobby Orr hockey jersey cookies that she brought to him. And Bobby Orr called her on her last day of work to congratulate her on her retirement, which is pretty exciting. So I knew Bobby Orr had to be incorporated in the set somehow. And of course, uh, when you think of a library, you think of books. So I knew I wanted to include books in some capacity. So Having that creative freedom that she gave me really allowed me to come up with something special, and you'll see as I make it how I did that. And so I continue flooding the cookies and getting ready for the next stage. So after I had finished flooding all the cookies, which took about 30 minutes, I allowed the cookies to dry overnight. This allowed the icing to get um, to harden somewhat so that I could do some of the next decorating steps. So it's the next morning and I'm going to get working on the colors to finish these cookies. So I'm measuring out three bowls of 200 grams of icing each and then I'm going to get started on making the colors. And so I have chosen a color scheme of blue and you'll see I'm going to use the blue um, gel coloring here and get it all over my hands. So I'll go and wash them. I'm going to use the blue, I'm going to use a reddish orange, and then I'm going to create a kind of golden yellow. And I'm using this golden yellow because I want to incorporate Bobby Orr in some capacity, and the he played for the Boston Bruins, and the Boston Bluers, Bruins colors are gold and black. And so uh, usually when I mix the colors into my royal icing, I automatically adjust the consistency of the consistency of the icing as well. I'm not doing that right now because I'm going to use the stiff icing to decorate a couple of the cookies first and then I will adjust the consistency. And so you'll see I'm going to take two of the colors and I'm going to put uh, a swash, a swatch, a smear, I don't know what the right word is, of color onto these cookies. And I'm doing that because they are going to have a black 36 on it. And I didn't want it to just be a black 36 on a cream colored cookie. I wanted there to be some of the rest of the colors on as well. And so now I can adjust the consistency of the icing to get it ready for the rest of the decorating steps.
And if you have watched me make icing before, you know that the way I check the consistency of the icing is to check to see how long it takes for the icing to smooth over on the top. And so I allow a ribbon of icing to fall onto the icing in the bowl. I count to 10 seconds using my watch, and then I shake the bowl for another two seconds. And if it is completely smooth on top, it's ready to go. This is the first cookie I'm working on. It is a stack of books, and this is uh, an image that I purchased from an artist on Etsy. I do purchase quite a few images from Etsy, and I'm working on each one of these six cookies by starting with putting the blue book on the bottom. Once I have finished all six of those blue books, I'm gonna go in and add a yellow book, which is the third book. I like there to be a little space in between because going through the process one after the other allows the icing to set a little bit and then when I add that book in between it's going to be a red book there will be definition between the books you'll see that in the finished product uh, just giving that a little bit of time to allow the icing to crust will allow that icing to uh, not flood together and then I'm going to add a little blue book on the top of this little pile and then move on to the next design And now this next design is also a book. It is an open book that has a bouquet of flowers coming out, which is to symbolize the sharing of knowledge. I thought that was very appropriate for um, our retiree. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a variety of edible ink markers in a variety of greens, and I'm creating stems and leaves coming out of the book. The, I love using these edible ink markers. They allow, these fine tips allow you to really create um, thin and delicate leaves and stems. And now I'm going to add the spine of the book in that orangey red. And I will add flowers in blue. I will then add the white of the pages of the book, which I will come back once that white has dried. I will come back in and add a black outline to indicate pages. And then I'll repeat this six times because I'm making six of these cookies, but I think they turned out really cute. And I'm using that same flower design on the happy retirement cookie as well. So now I'm adding the 36 to those cookies that I swiped earlier with the color. Next, I want to add pages uh, to the book covers, and I do that using my edible ink markers as a palette, and then I paint uh, the book's pages in there. I think it looks really great. Uh, I, I like using my edible ink markers as the paint palette just because I have such a variety of colors of them, and the thin tips wear out, but the thicker tips don't wear out as quickly, and so I still have lots of available ink in a variety of colors, so that works great. I'm also using this uh, these colors to add some depth to the covers of the books to you know give them a little bit more uh, of a worn-in look like a library book would, and uh, I think it turns out really nicely. And here's the finished set. If you look at the pile of books, I incorporated Bobby Orr by adding the title of his book. It was called Orr My Story. And I put that in. I also added a 36 to one of the books. I think the set came together beautifully with all the different colors. And now it's time to package. And so I always package my cookies in glassine bags. Glassine is a smooth and glossy paper that is air, water, and grease resistant. And the best part, it is compostable or recyclable. And so that's how I like to package my cookies. And my customers really respond well to the packaging as well.
And then I fold each bag top over twice and I close each bag with a branded sticker. And in my experience, the cookies stay fresh just as long as they would in plastic. Thanks for joining me today in the Sweet Handmade Cookies Kitchen as I made this retirement set, and thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. I'll be back next week.